In this tutorial, we will discuss how to conduct t-tests with an online calculator and with SPSS. If you do not have access to SPSS, you can use this online calculator. The website is provided in the external link section of Blackboard. This calculator gives you several options. You can either enter the data directly or enter the means, standard deviations, and sample sizes. Note that if you are doing a paired t-test, you must enter data directly. Let's begin with the independent groups t-test. After entering data for row 1 and for row 2, let's say these are the values. Then we would choose the unpaired t-test, which is the default option, and click Calculate Now. The important elements of the output are as follows. First, look at the t-value, which is halfway down the page. This is the value of the statistic. Next, look at the value for df, or degrees of freedom. Finally, look at the p-value at the top of the page. This tells you whether the result is statistically significant. The means and standard deviations for each group are provided at the bottom of the page. In this case, the mean of group 1 is 13.5 with a standard deviation of 2.89. The mean for group 2 is 20.50 with a standard deviation of 8.96. There are four participants in each group. The t-value is 1.49, rounded to the second decimal place, and there are six degrees of freedom. However, the p-value is 0.19, which is greater than 0.05, meaning that this difference between these two groups is not statistically significant. It is not greater than what we might expect by chance. For the paired t groups t-test, the procedure is the same. We can clear the form. However, if you are using pretest and post-test data, you should enter the pretest data in the column that says group 1, which we can relabel pre, and the post-test data in the column labeled group 2, which we can relabel as post. The interpretation is the same. So let's say that the data looks something like this. When we calculate, we see that t equals 4.56 with 3 degrees of freedom p equals 0 0.02, meaning that the pre-mean of 15.25 and the post-mean of 35 are significantly different from each other. They, that is a larger difference than what we would expect by chance. Now let's look at SPSS. We'll use our sample data set. Let's explore whether there's a difference between the treatment group and the control group in terms of the number of family dinners eaten in one week and in the number of hours of exercise. First, we choose the Analyze menu from the top of the page, and then select Compare Means and Independent Samples t-test. In the dialog box that pops up, select the dependent variables, in this case, dinners, and hours of TV. Click them over to the top box labeled Test Variables by using the arrow button. You can analyze as many dependent variables as you like at once, but we'll just look at these two for now. Next, select Condition or Group as the independent variable and click it over to the box labeled Grouping Variable. you must define the grouping variable. So click the box that says define groups and then enter 0 
and 1 for the two groups. As we previously told SPSS that 0 stands for the control condition and 1 stands for the treatment condition. Continue and then click OK and the output window opens. The first box displays the means and standard deviations for each group, which is handy. As you can see, the mean number of family dinners for the control group is 2.85 and for the treatment group 2.85, which is identical. The mean number of hours of TV for the control group is 10.68, rounding up, whereas the mean for the treatment group is 7.78, also rounding up. The second box displays the results of the t-test. First look at the information regarding Levine's test. You may recall that this tests whether the variances of the two groups are different from each other, which would be a violation of one of the assumptions of the t-test. If Levine's test is not significant, according to the column labeled SIG under the Levine's test section, which should be greater than 0.05, then the assumption of equality of variances is met, and you can refer to the first line of the t-test results for the results of the analysis. However, if SIG is less than 0.05, you will need to use the second line of t-test results, as this corrects for inequality of variances. Let's look at hours of TV watched per week first. As you can see, Levine's test is non-significant. P equals 0.47. So we use the first line of results. The T value is 2.06. Degrees of freedom is 38. And the P value is 0.046, which we would round up to 0.05, which is 0.05 or less. Thus, the two groups, treatment and control, differ in terms of how many hours of TV watched per week. To determine which group watches more TV, look at the descriptive statistics. The mean for the control group is 10.68, whereas the mean for the treatment group is 7.78. Thus, the control group watches more TV than the treatment group. Next, in terms of number of family dinners per week, Levine's test is non-significant, 0.17, so we use the first line of results. The T value is 0, meaning that the two groups' means were identical. The P value is 1.0, indicating complete non-significance. In other words, there is no difference between the two groups in the number of family dinners per week. A check of the means confirms this. Now let's close up this output. And before moving on to paired t-tests, let's look at how to create new variables using existing variables. For example, we may have two or more variables that we want to add together. This is especially true when each item on a test has been entered separately and we want to know the total score. However, it's also handy for adding other variables. In this data set, we have two variables or columns that represent pretest data the number of books read during week one and the number of books read week, during week two prior to the intervention. We also have two variables or columns that represent post-test data, the number of books read during week one and week two after the intervention. We want to add the two pretest weeks together to get the total number of books read prior to the intervention, and we want to add the two post-test weeks together to get the total number of books read after the intervention. To do this, go to the Transform menu and select Compute. We need to name the target variable, which is the new variable we're creating. Let's call the first new variable Books Pre. In the box that says Numeric Expression, enter the two variables that we're using to create this new variable, separated by a plus sign. Read one pre plus read to pre. Click OK and note that the new variable books pre appears in the data view. We can do the same thing for the post variable. Again transform, compute, this time we'll call it books 
post and we want to add read one post as well as read two post. Note that we can type in information directly into the box. We click OK, and OK, and the variable appears here, books post. Now let's do a paired t-test in SPSS using these new variables. We want to see if there was a change in the number of books read from pre-test to post-test for the entire sample. Go to Analyze, then Compare Means, and select Paired Samples t-test. You must select two variables before clicking the arrow. In our case, we want to select Books Pre and Books Post. Then click the arrow to move the variables over to the Paired Variables box. Click OK and the output appears. The first box represents the descriptive statistics. Note that the pretest mean is 3.38, rounded to two decimal places, and the post-test mean is 5.40. The next box presents the correlation between the two variables. There will presumably be a significant correlation between the two variables since the two variables come from a single group rather than from independent groups. Finally, the results of the analysis are presented in the last box. The columns of interest are T, DF, and SIG. The T value is negative 5.46, degrees of freedom is 39, and the P value, or SIG, is 0 .000, which is less than 0 .05. This indicates that there was a significant change in the mean number of books read from pretest to post-test. This concludes the tutorial.